sometimes I think we just have to try to engineer it or imagine it, um, you know, to make it look like it's functional, right? Okay, so I want to talk about um, how I establish like the ratio or size of a component on the model. Like, because there's no plans, right? You know, like initially, like I have a draft, like a rough draft that got me started. But when it comes to details, you don't really need a drawing. Like if that's what you decided you were going to do to begin with, like I don't have a drawing for any of this, except for uh, I, I sketched out a, a uh, elevation and a plan to get the basic shapes and components where I felt that they were a good representation of the scale of the model. So I want to build this winch. So I have as many photos as I, I, I can get, some rear shots, some side shots, etc. Like here's one from a distance. It's probably a telephoto lens, but you can see it's quite a beefy unit. There's a big spool here. And then there's a, you know, a, a sort of spool rack right here. So, you know, I know roughly then that if the, if the funnels are here where my finger is, according to that photo, I know that the, you know, the winch footprint runs from my finger here out to these bollards roughly. Okay. So I've got this rectangle piece of scrap. It's 30 thou and I'm going to build the winch on this. This is longer than I need, but I'm going to use this because I got it narrower, narrow enough, right? So I marked it. So these two lines right here are where the funnels are. And I know that this winch can slide in between the funnels. So once I get this square roughed in for the footprint, I'll, I'll know basically how I can achieve this. Okay. Like I can already see like how wide this spool, like there's two big bolsters here on the side and a couple of pins here, you know, rod, plastic rod there. The spool will be easy. That'll be a tube. I can circle cut the, you know, the end spool retainers. I'm going to use some rope, nautical rope with matte medium for the cable. I'm going to add some little details strip here and there, but it's going to be able to slide in between these funnels or out like in and out so I can figure out when I want to mount it I'll know exactly where to put it Okay, <clears throat> excuse me, a couple of tool tips. You should try to get one of these if you don't have one. These little engineering clamps, or sorry, not engineering, uh, machinist clamps, okay? They're, they're a must, like in this game. So you see I have two of these templates and I've clamped them together, so I wanna file them together, clean them up so they're both exactly the same, right? Okay, and here's another tip. Like I have a lot of these sandy sticks, as you know, Make up some with emery cloth as well. Emery, it, it'll last forever, like with plastic. Uh, get, like, they don't you know, always have grits. They have coarse, medium, fine and stuff. Uh, this is a medium. And I, I, I mean, I use this to shape parts all the time. Like I grab anything on my bench. Like I don't, I mean, a file is great, right? Okay, you need files, but I'll use this to do these little rounds. Like I'll use anything, nail file. Well, nail files, you know, last two minutes, right? This will last two years. <laughs> okay. Okay, so there, now you see, they were clamped together, filed them up, and they're both exactly the same. The parts, they're identical, okay? When you clamp them together and you use your little files, sanding sticks, whatever, nail files, whatever you feel comfortable with. 
it didn't take long. Like it took me, I don't know, half an hour to make these, I guess, to tweak them up and just relax and, <clears throat> excuse me. Okay, so let's have a quick look at the winch so far and just summarize quick um, what I use for materials. So you can see the measurements. So this particular plate, which it won't be this long when it's finished, it's probably going to get cut off about where the pencil is there. This gives me something to hold on to and I got to cut just a small sort of return on there. If there's a sort of a block on there, I don't even know what the block is for. Um, I can show it to you if you want. This big block right here, haven't got a clue what it is. Looks like there's a hatch on there though. So who knows what that is, but that, that'll get added on this flange, etc. But you can see the rollers here. These actually spin on the model. This, this is floating as well. Um, but it's not totally in place yet because I want to wrap this with some scale rope as cable. And then you can see the rollers, which are actually 1 8 tube with 1 16 rod pins. Number 222 and 224, that's how I made these. You can see I left a little bit of an overhang here. I'll, I'll nip that off eventually and just sand them flush. So you can see the cables that come off and then they go between these two rollers here. And then there's actually a, a um, like a type of a gurney, like it, like it, it has half round on it too. You can see I added half round here because the cable will, in case the cable pulls against that. It's got rollers and half round. So the whole inside of this aperture opening is rounded steel. So it's got nothing to chafe on. The cable won't cut or chafe. And then there's a gurney that floats back and forth here. I don't know if it's hydraulic, but I'm going to just frame that in a piece of it with a half round on it. I guess when the cable's being wound in it, it threads it back and forth on the spool. So I've, I have yet to do that. And then you can see the spool is uh, a piece of number 234 7 16 tube. I haven't centered it on anything. It's just floating and I'm not going to because I want to be able to move it around to position it. It's going to be back underneath. I'll show you what it'll look like on the boat. So it's going to drop in like this when it's done. Okay. And it'll be fun to paint this too, all the weathering here, because all the rust and the paint worn off and the cable coming out and, you know, dragging across the transom stern area here. But uh, you can see the advantage of building this as a separate component, right? Rather than trying to build it onto the ship. Like it helps to do this kind of thing, to think that through as you build certain components on the model. It makes it a lot easier. So just quickly then, just for the measurement, it's about two and a half inches long, this plate at 17 feet in HO scale, roughly. It's about an inch and a quarter wide. And I, sh and I shared with you already the materials that are used. And then, excuse me, these side journals, there's no particular way to do them except that, <clears throat> excuse me, when you do this, make sure that this piece is part of your plate. Like make this all, like forget this line in here, right? There's where your rolling pins go. Draw that within the square, like your your uh, elevation, okay? And then just draw the plate and then just trace it onto the plastic. 
and then cut two out. And that's how you make. No one will know what what the winch is. Like they're all different. There's thousands of winches made. They're all different, right? They're all up to the engineer and the draftsman, etc., and the manufacturer. So, yeah, and so you'll end up with a winch that'll be convincing. Okay, this part here is probably important because that's for the cables. You know, they'll get the cable will swing back and forth against that half round inside of there and then on the rollers as well okay Okay, so I just want to show you just a small little detail tip. Um, it might seem insignificant, but it it's probably relative to a fine scale. See this little clevis um, piece right here on the side of this winch? It's this big bolster with a hanger on it. See that big cast steel there with the ropes hanging off it and so on. So if I want to make something like that on 187 scale, I'll just show you one way to, to sort of achieve a little bit of a rim like that. First, first you want to drill the hole, like just in some scrap like this, before you cut that piece out, right? And this is a 1.9 millimeter hole, which is suitable for it. But you want to use a file that's about a third larger than this diameter, okay? And you drill the hole, and then what you do is, is you just turn the file just a little bit back out, just a little bit back out and just do that like one full turn back out another full turn back out and keep going for about maybe half an inch or three quarters of an inch down the file okay and then you'll see see how there's a see how there's a bit of a rim there See that? There's a rim right there, see? And on the other side. So it's a way that you can enhance portholes if you want to on the side of a ship. Like if you're doing a whole series of portholes, you're building a panel. If you do that, 1.9 drill bit, which I use these here because I love these drill bits. Hashtag uh, no, spans, no sponsor God hand, but they're just excellent drill bits. And then this is just a standard um, file by, uh, I believe, Excel. Okay, round file. Okay, see that? Neat, eh? Okay, so uh, moving right along here. Actually, this winch is turning out to be a lot of fun to build. Uh, it's probably one of the funnest components so far. 
uh, just really enjoying it, detailing it up. It's not exactly like the prototype, but I'm using a little bit of uh, my own engineering license to dress it up a bit because a lot of the details you just can't see from the limited photos that are available. But you can see here where I'm just, uh, here's an example of uh, using trim to, uh, you know, for doing metal work. So you can see I s started it here, this, it's just 80 thou by 15 thou and glue it, just bend it into the corner there, it bends easily. And then I'm gonna wrap it around here. But what I've done is I just packed out with some scrap there. And I'm just gonna snip that off like that. And then you can see like this one here is filed up and I'll just bend and I'll wrap that around <clears throat> and then cut it off on the bottom. I'll just clean that up nice. That top roller journal. And then you can see here, I don't know if I mentioned this, this is just rope from a uh, Corel, old like some accessory material left over from my model ship days back in the day um, for all the rigging and stuff and then use that for the cable. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to paint it with some diluted satin varnish, 50-50 water varnish and just paint it just to seal it. And then when the time comes, I'll just paint this, <coughs> excuse me, and then I'll run a cable from the back side that you don't see and run it through here. Okay. So I just want to say at this point that uh, don't underestimate, you know, these small profile strips, uh, number 104, like 10 by 80, 10 by 60, 10 by 40. I use 40, 60, and 80 quite a bit for flanges and trim. And it's these little details, just this simple strip that can really make a model component pop. Okay. So this is a small little rail or fence because a lot of the water on the deck, right? There'd be a lot of water floating around and it wouldn't be running into this machinery or it's, it's, it's sort of a guardrail almost, you know, for a lot of excess water just to keep all this machinery, um, you know, fairly dry, etc. So I just wanted to point this out. You can see a couple of nut and bolt castings there. These are from Grantline. Uh, I don't even know if you can still get them, but you know, it's something, you know, that a veteran modeler usually has in their kit over the years, they collect stuff. And when I was in O scale many decades ago, I had, you know, tons of these, right? So always kept them because they always come in handy and they're versatile and universal in terms of scale just depending on the size of the bolt and the scale you're building. So on the photo, I noticed there was two big bolts. Holding this big plate down, <clears throat> excuse me, on the deck. Now maybe I'll put one in each corner back here, but you, know, you won't really see it, but you know, that's the kind of thing that you know, adds nice little details to things, okay? Okay, so once again, this uh, winch is proving to be a lot of fun to build. Um, probably more to it than what the picture or photo indicates or the lack thereof, because there's some things you just can't see on this. You can't see back here anywhere. Maybe just a glimpse of this kind of thing going on. You can't really see this track here, but there is something going on. So just sometimes I think we just have to try to engineer it or imagineer it 
um, you know, to make it look like it's functional, right? So I know there's a track on here with a type of um, a big sort of threading kind of anvil piece here, um, if I can call it that. And it actually sits on this track like this. And it, and it probably hydraulically or whatever, or on a jack screw, goes back and forth on this track as it threads the cable evenly on this drum. Like that would totally make sense, right? Like you wouldn't want this with all that weight and uh, force. You know, this cable has to be wound properly. It's heavy duty. And so as the, the cable is splaying out or being yarded in, this unit goes back and forth like this. And you can see that I used, you know, half round number 243 and 20 by 100 strip number 125 to just frame this up. And I made it proud again, you know, each edge and then just nibbled off the corners and glued in some half round on the bottom and the sides, you know, because the cable would be rubbing against that. So that's pretty cool. You know, I'll just mount that on there like in the middle. Should do it. And then just to clarify that, or to give you some context, you can sort of see on this photo what I mean. See, it's like it's right in here. You can't see all the dimensions of it, but you can see the, the winch here uh, as I built it. And then this sits in there and it goes back and forth like that, you know. Okay. Okay, so how can you tell I'm having fun, right, with the winch? <laughs> so um, I want to talk about a couple of things here that I think is important for maybe, or maybe it'll answer some questions or just some queried minds. But like I'm just right now, like I got most of this built now, right? Um, except I haven't addressed this side yet, but I'm just finishing up this side. So I have, you know, Basically, all of this part, like the rollers, and there's an I beam down here. Um, there's this big, I don't know what this is, this big beefy cast piece, and there's a hatch, but I put that in there, you can see with a hatch. And then I saw a hint of bolts there, so I put bolts there. Um, it seems strange that they're not on the corners, but. Who knows, right? Um, what's an interesting detail here is these little hangers for these clevises. See that? So I don't know if I'll do that. I'll, I may do it on the back of the funnels, but we'll see. One never knows. When you get down to that part, you know, it just depends how you're feeling about the progress and momentum of them all. You might want to move on. But okay, so this I added this uh, hook, this rope sort of uh, hook piece you can see right here. That turned out pretty good. And then you can sort of see this part of the, the guard to the uh, big drum back here. And then there's this almost like a windlass kind of option. Like, I don't know what that is. There's, I don't think it's a counterweight because it looks like it's hollow. Like it's not super heavy as it, like a flywheel counterweight. So it might be a just an option to sling a rope to and wind off on like i'm not really sure but it looks like it though that it might be a type of windlass but i could be wrong so i just made a hint of it here right just to fill in that space because when it's actually tucked into the back of the tug right like you can like it sticks out like this see so it's there it makes for some nice detail doesn't it all right now 
what I'm building now is this little, there's like a little drum or a gearbox right here with a journal on it right there and a pen. So I'm just working on that. And I want to show you how I make parts like that. Um, so I just added a couple of little I-beams here and I sort of built them out and added a plate and then I added, installed that flange. Um, I might have to pack out the bottom just a little bit because of the camber on the deck. Like it's fine here, but it's sort of a little bit of a gap there. But I won't worry about that yet because I can probably solve that by running another flange around here. Okay. Now you can see where I'm making this kind of gear drum housing. And I made it on two pieces of 60 thou. I just took some scrap, cut two pieces of scrap. And... And then laminated them together with some re really wet solvent, just squeeze it tight so it mushrooms. And then I sand it up, like within, I think, 10 minutes. And then what I do is, is I just cut that, like I cut that off, right? Like I carefully cut it off, like with a really sharp, on the heel of the number 11. And I just cut that off. So that piece is going to go like this, Okay. All right. Now this little piece, this is all scrap too. That's 60 thou. That's the, the sort of bearing journal on the, that runs just a pin through there. So I pre-drilled a hole. I cut that off at end scrap. But I drilled the hole first and then I shaped and filed this and then cut it off and I glued it to this scrap piece of plastic here. And then I can just eyeball it in, right? Because you're not going to draw these parts. Like it's best just to make them on the fly. I'm going to trim that up and it's going to mount like that, see? Okay. And that'll pretty much finish off this side. And then I'm going to go around to this side. And then there's some gear things, like some controls, like wheels and a couple of levers and stuff. This is probably where they operate their cable winch on this side. This is the off cuts from building this. And I really feel good about this winch. Like th this is what I love about this hobby. There, yeah, there's times where you just kind of want to get through certain procedures and stuff, but uh, you just settle in, right? You just take it in stride, right? Because the hobby, again, is full of rewards. Like this, like I had so much fun building that. I mean, that's just like that took me. So that was two days. Uh, you know, f four hour sittings, five hour sittings, right? So 10 hours, 12 hours, I think I put into this, maybe if that. Um, and I'm really happy with it. You know, it turned out really good. So you can see I just dressed with some details. Um, just an impression of what it looks like, right? And then on this side, I did that, like gearboxes and stuff and little journals for wheels to turn. So there's some hydraulics going on here, but I'm not going to add any more finer details on this unless it's probably photo etch because it's about the limit of, of plastic here. I mean, you can do some like handles and, and smaller diameter dowels and stuff, but um, I'm just going to leave it for now, like just, just to move on. I can always come back and revisit it later, right? But it's pretty much all done and this was the rigging rope off of you know you can get it from billings and stuff like that in hobby stores and then i just painted it with some uh, semi-gloss like acrylic from vallejo or you can use really thin matte medium too and it knocks the fuzz off and makes it sort of a acrylic -y kind of finish so when it paints it you know you can turn it into a cable with some gray paint or whatever but so i'm really happy like i'm really happy with the way this little embossment happens with the file here on these hangers and you know this here stuff going on really made a difference a couple of bolt castings and this big hatch deal uh, i'm actually quite happy with it and it just slides in like that see I'll let you see it from this side too see so now i can basically paint that as a separate model component and then just drop it in you know like at the end or whatever so I mean you almost want to glue it in just to 
give you a sense of completion. But uh, that will go in the bag with some of the other parts that I've finished. And then now what I'm going to do is, is there's a little bit more work to do back here. I'm just going to finish off before I move up to this hatch to finish. And then I have the funnels and then the command bridge, et cetera, up front and some other work. So it's moving right along. Uh, quite pleased with it so far. Oh yeah, and these little doorway frames here, like see these? There's a little bit of a warp in them, but once I get the... That's because when I pull down this deck, it kind of pin like the camber kind of pinch because the back of this tug, you know, they bent these down, right? These rear wing platforms uh, behind the funnels. But these door frames right here, like that, just you just pull that, you know, with a pick, right? Uh, when I glue the funnels and I'll just pull that or just run a strip on the inside on the funnel and that'll just straighten that out. And then I have the doors built, which I'll paint separately and tack on. But I really, really feel good about that. That was fun. The funnest part of the whole build, believe it or not, was this winch. Okay.